Good morning. We seem a little thin on the ground. Is it really the right time? Okay. <laughs> well, it is lovely to be able to welcome you to our all-age service this morning. Uh, my name is Alison, and I'm sure we'll have a few more people joining us shortly. Um, and we're looking forward to Ben speaking to us from God's Word later on. If you are visiting today, it's lovely to have you with us, uh, and welcome to those of you who've joined online. As I've said, it's an all-age service, but do feel free to make use of the creche, which is already in full swing in the lower lounge if you need to. Well, what a joy to gather together. Let us open with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Thank you for the freedom we have to join together to worship you this day. Thank you for the opportunity to encourage and support each other as we hear from your word and as we celebrate what a great God we have and a great message of hope we have to offer others. Please be honoured in and through our worship today. Amen. Well, we're going to begin our service with a song, a great song of praise, encouraging our hearts and souls to worship God. So please do stand if you're able, and we're joined to sing, Bless the Lord, O My Soul.
have a seat. Well, what a great way to start our service of worship. Um, there are many great things happening in the parish, all parts of the way we worship God. There's lots in the newsletter, lots of detail. Please do read it in your inbox or there are some hard copies at the back of the church. But just to bring up a few, flag up a few, ahead of the annual parochial church meeting on Sunday the 12th of May, we're going to be reviewing the um, parish electoral roll. So if you've been part of our worshipping church family for around six months or more, we'd encourage you to consider joining the roll if you haven't done so already. It just helps us and means you can attend and take part in the annual meeting. There are forms at the back and available on the website to be returned by the 23rd of April, please, uh, back to the church office. And ahead of the uh, APCM, the, each church holds its annual meeting to elect deputy wardens. Nomination forms are available in each church, and that will happen here briefly after next Sunday morning service, so the 21st of April. Now, E in our vision is every word spoken for Jesus. And there are two great opportunities to think about inviting friends to hear a little bit more about Jesus. Um, the Christians in Sports Quiz uh, is an outreach with a guest speaker on the Saturday, the 27th of April. Um, it's a great evening of sports trivia and a chance to think a little bit more about the Christian faith. Great to bring uh, friends to that don't know Jesus yet and family. It's free, but you do need to register. So between uh, tables of four and eight, um, bring, bring, uh, sign up on the website and bring a friend. You can book a ticket for two or three people and then we'll put you all together. But please could you sign up by next Sunday. Uh, also, Hope Explored, this other outreach event, is happening at Open House this uh, next few weeks. Open House is our outreach at St. Philip's on a Saturday morning, and from 12 to half past one for the next three Sundays, there will be a light lunch served, plus the exciting Hope Explored course, three weeks looking at the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus in Luke's Gospel, showing uh, our friends, our visitors, our guests about the hope, about the peace, about the purpose we find through knowing Jesus. Um, great for people to refresh their faith, but great to invite friends to come and hear. That would be a super thing to be praying about and to considering joining. Again, sign up on the website. To do with our framework of our vision, put your hand up if you heard any bells this morning. Great. The bells have been a blessing in our church for a long time, and our bell-ringing tower captain, Jackie Fletcher, has resigned after many years of faithful service. And she's made sure that the bells have rung across the town every Sunday morning. If anyone would like to send a message of thanks or to sign a card, please can you see Helen Longley in the foyer at the end of the service. It would be great to show our thanks and recognition of Jackie's work. As before, details are in the uh, weekly newsletter. Please do read it and ask the office if you need any more information. Now... We are part way through April. And last week, which was the first Sunday that we met in April, I'm afraid we omitted to celebrate birthdays. <laughs> if you have a birthday in April, please do tell the refreshments team there are special cakes to offer you to celebrate your birthday this month. If you are under 18, would you like to come up and have a special gift and a prayer? Has anybody got a birthday in April? Go on. You can come, come and let's sing, let's sing. Thank you very much. Musicians and words are on the screen shortly. And we'll sing and uh, invite Amelia to join me. Thank you. Let's sing. Hi. Well, lovely that we've got Amelia with us. Let's pray for all those who've got birthdays in April. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We pray you would bless Amelia and her friends as they enjoy her special day next weekend. But would everybody know that they are loved and precious to you. And may you keep 
each of your children safe in your care this coming year. Amen. Amelia, come and choose something from the box. We hope you have a lovely time next Saturday. We are grateful to our great God for giving us life. Um, and we sang earlier about our holy God, who we are here to join in worship to. Now, that is great and wonderful. And sadly, we have to recognize that we don't measure up to God's holiness. So just now, we're going to have a moment of quiet as we bring to mind those times we have thought, said, or done wrong things or failed to do what is right. Our God is the only one who has the power to forgive us. And wonderfully, he has sent Jesus as our super savior to make open the way to him and to help us change. As we join in the confession this morning, we will reuse the response on the screen, save us and help us. If you'd like to join in the actions, save us and help us as we respond, please do. Let us pray. God, our Father, we come to you sorry for our sins, for turning away from you and not thinking about what you want for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we want without doing what you want us to do. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. And for the things we've thought and said that don't bring you glory, Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For acting as if we are ashamed to be trusting in Jesus, Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. May God, who is powerful and loving, forgive us and give us strength by his spirit to live our new lives trusting in Jesus. Amen. We have a God who is rich in mercy and reassures us of our forgiveness when we have said sorry. From Psalm 103, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. Now we're going to sing about the one who has saved us, a super saviour who has defeated death and Hello. risen from... Oh, oh, in Hello. a moment we'll sing. Hello, Josephine. No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. What, what are no. you doing here right now? Oh, I am Marina and I look after the fish. You look after the fish? Oh, yeah. Where are the fish? In the sea. In the sea? What are you, what are you talking about? Well, well, I mean, it, it's a sea, but it's, it's not really a sea, but it's, um, it's like the Sea of Galilee. That's what they call it, because it's so, so big here. Wow. So you've come from the Sea of Galilee, and you live... Un under the sea? Under the sea. Wow. I live under the sea, in the Sea of Galilee, and I've seen so much action on this shore, like way back in the time of Joshua. You won't believe it. My goodness, how extraordinary. You won't it. So you live by the sea forever, by the Sea of Galilee, yep. and you've seen everything on the shore. And I look after the fish. Wow, Marina, that's great. Well, thank mm -hmm. you for joining us. Do you know what? Marina is here to help us celebrate the exciting launch of Holiday Club 2024 called Under the Sea. Under the Sea. <laughs> um, we would love, if you are in primary school, you to join Marina as we explore a bit about Jesus on the shores of Lake Galilee above Marina's cave under the Sea of Galilee. Please would you come and join us. There are flyers that look like this for you to take, if you want to invite a friend, you need to give it to them this week. Because bookings are open, we think the places are gonna go really quickly. 
So although we're hoping for a lot of children, we can't have everybody. Every primary school child in Tunbridge won't fit. So you need to get your, your sign-up form with your friend, if they can come, back to the office on the website. It's, a, it's an events thing, you click on it. Come and, come and join us to celebrate Holiday Club in the summer. 22nd of July to the 26th of July, every morning, 9.45 till 12.30. Marina's going to be here helping us explore the life of Jesus. Um, I think we need to just remind ourselves a little bit about what went on last year. Because not only do we need children to come, we need some grown-ups to help too. So Andy, if you can pop on a little reminder of what we did last year, that would be super. Under the sea, and um, obviously, I'm going to need a little bit of help. So, there are a variety of areas that we need some help in. Um, Jeremy, we could do with a bit of help with the musicians. Thank you. If you're not that active and you can't run around with the football and the toilet rolls, you can pray. So, thank you so much, our uh, involved people. We are really excited to be launching today um, the Holiday Club and looking at all the ways we, we can be involved. If you can breathe, we need you. <laughs> um, please, would you take a form at the end of church? I might be giving them to everybody. And if you could prayerfully think about if there's an area in here on on the list that you would love to offer to support us with tick it give it back to me straight away if you know or consider over the next couple of weeks and please would you get these back by the 28th of april two weeks um, and we would love to invite our uh, teenagers that are here. There's a few of you I can spot. If you would like to come and help with our holiday club, um, we would love to give you a green T-shirt uh, and you can be part of it all. There's a permission form link coming out on the email tomorrow. Um, it's just so exciting to have this opportunity to share the good news of Jesus with the children of our town. Josephine. Should we do the singing? Oh, no, sorry. No. <laughs> oh, Yes, 
I think we do need to do the singing. I think we're, we're going to savior. we're going to sing Super Saviour, like I was about to introduce our great Saviour. Let's stand if you'd like to and join us with Super Saviour. Today's Bible verse is from John's Gospel, chapter 21. It's in your pew Bibles, 1090. That's John chapter 21, uh, 1 to 14. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and then you'll find some. When they did, they were unable to haul in the net because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment round him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred metres. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. 
Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It is uh, great to be here at uh, all ages together. Um, let me ask you, I think we've got some slides uh, up on the screen. So let me ask you, how can we tell if someone really is who they say they are? How can we tell if someone really is who they say they are? We have lots of news stories uh, about people pretending to be other people. Uh, some criminals even use other people's names and addresses to steal their money. How can we tell if someone really is who they say they are. This is where we're going to need a picture. I think we've got, have we got our slides for the screens? One second. One second. We're going to think of a famous footballer. What about Harry Kane? What about Harry Kane? Famous footballer at the moment. There we go. Harry Kane. What about Harry Kane? Uh, if someone came into church now and said they were Harry Kane, Jeremy's been holding a football up, but we know it's Jeremy. If somebody came into church now and said they were Harry Kane, how could we get them to prove it? Hands up. How could we get them to prove it? Can I do a favourite um, footballer trick? Yes. Try and show some football skills. Try and do a favourite footballer trick. That'd be a great thing to kick a ball around, show some skills. What about if someone came into church, a famous chef, let's say Gordon Ramsay, for example. What if someone came into church now and said they were Gordon Ramsay? How could we get them to prove it? Martha, let me ask you. Get them to make us a meal. Hopefully they make us a really, really super tasty meal. Okay, I've got one more. How about Roald Dahl? What's Roald Dahl famous for? Hands up if you know what. Gabriel? Writing books. Writing books, telling stories. It'd be a really big surprise if Roald Dahl came in now because he's already died. But if someone appeared in church now and said they were Roald Dahl, the great storyteller, how might we ask them to prove it? Do an ID test. Well, they could do an ID test, that's right, we might look at them. Uh, what, what, if we didn't have all that equipment here at the moment, we didn't have our DNA testing kit here at the front of the church, what else could we ask them to do? What else could we ask them to do, young or old? Okay, go on, Chloe. Read us a book or tell us a story. Let's see if we'd be really, really excited to listen to the amazing story. These people could prove it's really them by doing things we'd recognise. That's the point. These people could prove it's really them by doing things we recognise, things they're famous for doing. How do we know if someone really is who they say they are? How do we know if they're the real deal? Well, that's something we see in today's Bible passage. And um, do keep your Bibles open at, at page 1090. That will help us. Um, we're going to look at the Bible passage in two shorter talks um, this morning. Uh, let's remember where we are in the Bible. Jesus has died. He's been raised to life again. Verses 1 and 14 tell us that Jesus, he's already appeared to his disciples. In fact, our Bible passage today is the third time Jesus has appeared to his disciples since rising from the dead. Imagine the scene. The disciples have left Jerusalem. They've headed north to Galilee. In Mark's Gospel, the angel at Jesus' tomb says the disciples are going to see the ridden Jesus in Galilee. So they've headed there. Seven of the disciples are together when one of them, Peter, tells the others he's going fishing out on the lake. They all agree to go with him. I wonder if they were hungry. I mean, if they were hungry, it would make sense to go fishing. So they get up and they head out into the boat. Now, I wonder, is there somebody here who'd like to help me go fishing? Who hasn't done anything so far? Have we got any hands, any people, anybody who'd like to help me go fishing? 
Come on, Dylan, we'll invite Dylan. We'll have one more. Who hasn't said or done anything yet this morning? James, we've asked you a question. We've asked... Brilliant, brilliant. Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, Thomas, Jeff, got you, Jeff, right here, right. What I need one of you to do is, Dylan, just for a second, don't do anything yet, grab the end of that rope. No, the other one, definitely the, no, the other one, definitely the end of the other one. Right, Jeff, you come here. I've got a gift for you. It's not a gift for you, it's mine. You can just use it. We'll make it bigger. Right, I need you to stand, Dylan, right, I need you to come over here where I am, put, bring the rope with you, and what I need you to do, Jeff, is catch the fish as they come out. Now, Dylan, pull it. Go, go, go. Catch the fish, Jeff. Keep pulling, Dylan. Come on, quicker. Catch the fish. Catch the fish. Come on, Jeff. Keep going, Dylan. Pull it. Where are they? Come on, keep going. Oh, guys. Wait there a minute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just like the disciples. Look at your Bibles. Verse 3. The disciples fished all night. You only had to fish for a minute or so, but they caught nothing. They caught nothing. Then verse 4, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. The disciples didn't realise it was Jesus. It, it may be Jesus kept himself hidden from them. It may be it was just so dark in the morning, they didn't quite see him clearly. But they're still out on the lake, in the boat, when Jesus calls to them. And his call is something like this. Lads, haven't you caught anything yet? Try on the other side. Now, fishermen don't usually like it when other people tell them what to do. But they've spent all night fishing, and they've caught nothing, so they give it a go. So they turn to the other side of the boat. Right, Jeff, I need you back in position. You can leave that one there, Dylan. Dylan, let's try the fishing line on the other side of the boat. I need you to see what we're going to get here. Pull, pull, pull. Jeff, see if you can catch the fish. Dylan, see if we can get them into the net. That's brilliant. So we don't want to lose them all. Keep going, keep pulling, keep pulling. Hard, hard, hard. Don't worry if they don't think. Can you grab this bit here? Keep pulling, keep pulling. Keep seeing if you can get them all in. Brilliant. Jeff, let's get them in. Hard, hard, pull them far. There's so many of them. Quick, 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 keep them in. They're all falling out of the net. Keep going, keep going. There we go. Let's keep, shall I help you as well? Here, Dylan, pull this bit, quick. They're getting everywhere, they're getting all over you. Quick, 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 some are falling out. My goodness, well done. <laughs> Guys, you've done a great job. Do you want to grab a seat? Do you want to stick that down? Thank you for your fishing expertise. There were so many fish, they couldn't pull them all into the boat. We read later in verse 11, there are 153 whoppers. I bet you'd have wanted to count every single one too if you'd caught so many. They've got a net full of fish when suddenly, verse 7, one of the disciples, John, he recognises it's Jesus. It's the Lord, he shouts. As soon as Peter hears this, he jumps into the water and swims to Jesus. The other disciples follow in their boat, pulling the net full of fish. We read in verse 9 that once they get to the shore, breakfast has already been made for them. Jesus is cooking fish and he's baking bread and Jesus invites them to eat with him. As breakfast is being served, we read verse 12, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. The disciples don't ask Jesus who he is. They don't have to. They know it's Jesus. And they know he really is the Lord. They know it's really the Lord Jesus. And this is the really important point. It's really Jesus. The disciples are going to need to get this. They're going to need to know this because they are going to be the first witnesses to Jesus. They'll be the ones who build the first church. They'll be the ones who tell people all over the world that Jesus really is Lord and Saviour. That Jesus isn't dead, he really is alive, and he is the Lord of everything. The disciples must be sure that Jesus they knew and loved has risen from the dead, because they will have to give their lives up for it. 
And more importantly, their message, Jesus is risen and he is Lord and Saviour, that is going to change the lives of millions and millions of people everywhere. How does Jesus show it's really him? Well, think back to our first pictures. How can people be sure they are who they say they are? How can we be sure they're the real deal? How can these disciples be sure this person on the shore really is Jesus? Well, Jesus gives them some pointers. He reminds them of things he's already done. In Luke's Gospel, we read a very similar account of a fishing incident. When Jesus calls his first disciples, Peter's been fishing all night, he doesn't catch anything, Jesus tells them to put their necks down, when suddenly they catch so many fish, the nets break. A very similar thing is happening here again. Jesus reminds them it's really him. And also, when they come ashore, did you notice the disciples see fish and bread for breakfast? I've got here a basket of two fish and five loaves fish and bread fish and bread does that ring any bells hands up does that ring any bells for any of us here josephine the feeding of the five thousand jesus fed over five thousand men and their families it's really jesus this is not an imposter this is not a jesus wannabe the disciples know it They know it in their hearts. This is the same Jesus doing the same things, but now risen from the dead. And that is our first point. It is really Jesus. Jesus is making sure his disciples know it. They're going to be the ones who will take the gospel out to the world. News of his forgiving, transforming love. Our passage starts and ends. Verse 1, verse 14 with this point. Jesus is now appearing to his disciples. They know it's Jesus. So as we finish this first talk, what for us? Well, listen to the disciples. They are reliable eyewitnesses. They knew for sure Jesus was risen from the dead. Why? Because they saw him. Jesus made it really clear it was really him. So we can trust them when they write about him here. The disciples knew for sure that the Gospels are written by people who saw the risen Lord Jesus, by eyewitnesses who really do know what they're talking about. Why do we need to believe the disciples? Chapter 20, verse 31, these are written that you may believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. We have pages and pages of reliable evidence that Jesus lived, died, and rose at a point in human history. Four great gospel accounts, loads of other letters written to churches, so that we might believe Jesus is the Messiah, and we might have life in his name. There is light and life, hope and help, now and forever, only with Jesus. And Jesus says there's no other way for us to have a right relationship with God we need. But we can by believing in him. It is really Jesus. Jesus really rose. Jesus really is the Lord. Believe the evidence the disciples have given us and so have life in his name. Well, great. As we reflect on that great message that the disciples are understanding um, and going to tell uh, the world and tell us at some point we've heard the good news, we want to think about telling others. So we're going to sing a little song that we learnt before Christmas, tell them, tell them, tell everybody. And As we do that, we want to remember the great evidence we've got for basing our faith on, uh, the real truth of the risen Lord Jesus and the stone rolled away from the tomb and the great message we can share with our town as we think about all those outreach events in the coming weeks and months. Let's stand if you're able to sing, tell them, tell them.
you do have a seat. I think we've got, yeah, there we go. We've got some more slides. It's really Jesus. Uh, we've seen that already. Uh, as we look at our passage just once more this morning, uh, one more thing, it's really Jesus, and Jesus is real. It's really Jesus, and Jesus is real. I wonder, when someone thinks about life after death and, and things like heaven, what, what, what do some people think about? If you were thinking about life after death and things like heaven, what, what do some people picture in their minds? Any thoughts, hands up, any ideas, young or old? What do people think about, Just Angels. Angels? Angels? Yeah, that's something people think about. Angels? Anything else people think about? Martha? <coughs> shining lights, might be shining lights, Chloe? Some people think about Jesus. Yeah, anything else when we think about life after death? Or Selena, right in the back, big voice. Sitting on a cloud. Sitting on a cloud. Probably a nice fluffy cloud and not a rain cloud. Uh, that is absolutely right. People tend to think of Spiritual things, what about this? Like a stairway up into the clouds. Uh, or, or people might think, well, they might think about angels. Uh, when we think about life after death and things like that, might think about angels. Some people might think about ghosts as well. Even doggy ghosts, sometimes we might think about that. One of the things I get asked as a vicar, one of the toughest theological questions I'm ever asked is, do you think there'll be animals? Will my pet be in heaven? There's a whole other, we won't talk about that now. Maybe doggy ghosts, ghosts, maybe doggy ghosts. Um, we finished earlier by thinking about John chapter 20, verse 31. These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. <coughs> the disciples are reliable witnesses to Jesus' resurrection. They wrote what they did, so we might believe and trust in Jesus. And in believing, we might have life in his name. So the question for our second bit of the talk is, what does that life look like? Well, our passage gives us two things. First, it teaches us about life after death. Remember our pictures just now. When we think about life after death, we tend to think about spiritual things, floating like angels or fluffy clouds or ghosts or things like that, shining light. Things that aren't quite real physically. But that's not how Jesus appears to his disciples. Jesus doesn't appear like a ghost type figure. Verse 5, Jesus calls out to his disciples across the lake. And when the disciples finally make it to the shore with their massive catch of fish, Jesus speaks with them. In fact, verse 9, before they even get to the shore, Jesus has been cooking breakfast for them. He's made a fire, he's grilling some fish, he's baking some bread. All this talk of food is making me hungry. I'm always hungry in the morning and I love breakfast. Hands up, is anybody else here hungry? <coughs> okay, we've got a few people, mostly young people. I bet there are some older people here who are hungry as well. Now, in fact, my five loaves and fishes, they're not quite just bread rolls. They are, in fact, bacon rolls. There is white bread and bacon, food allergies, just so you know, I've shared it with you already, eat it at your own risk. But, would anybody like to share one of my bacon rolls with me? Boys, why don't you take one between you, split it in half, that's good, and then we can share them out. Well done, anybody else like to share a bacon roll? Well done, Izzy, share it with mum and dad. Right, we've got, um, let's come along this way, Gabriel and Chloe, why don't you share Martha and Freddie, why don't you have a share? Uh, guys, Jeff and Thomas, why don't you share? Bethy, Josiah, there will be more bacon left at home, I promise. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, what do you reckon, guys? What do you reckon? How do they taste? James, Dylan, yeah, thumbs up from James and Dylan. Thumb yeah, lovely. Pretty nice. That, that may just keep you going until lunchtime. Real bread, real bacon. Look what Jesus does in verse 13. Jesus came, took the bread. It wouldn't have been bacon. Took the, for lots of reasons. Took the bread, gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This isn't spiritual bread and fish. 
This is real bread and real fish. Jesus has been speaking to the disciples. He's been cooking and serving them breakfast. All very real things, like that bread you guys have just eaten. Jesus' resurrection is real. It is physical. The risen Lord Jesus is real, as real as any one of us sat here this morning. Chapter 20, verse 31. What does it mean to have life in Jesus' name? Real, physical life forever. As Jesus was raised from the dead, so we will be too. We can look to Jesus' resurrection body to see what ours are going to be like. Life with Jesus after death, life forever, for eternity, forever and ever and ever. Get your heads around that. It's not just going to be spiritual fluffy thing. Life forever with Jesus is going to be real, physical life. It embodies that are as real as the bodies we're sat in this morning. In fact, they will be our bodies, but made perfect. Jesus is real. Resurrection life is real. That is a part of the gospel message, the good news. Christians, those trusting in Jesus, will be raised to new physical life, to live with Jesus forever when he comes back. That is the life we are going to have for eternity. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Felicity. Unprompted, she's not even part of my talk. There's a response to the word of the gospel. Absolutely. Absolutely. Praise the Lord for that. The other thing this passage teaches us is about the life we have now while we wait for Jesus to return. We saw earlier Jesus is reminding the disciples of a similar fishing incident. Another time when they fished all night but they didn't catch anything. Well, this happened when Jesus was choosing his first disciples. Jesus told his disciples to follow him But he said if they follow him, they won't just catch fish. Can anyone remember what Jesus said his disciples would catch if they followed him? Come follow me and you will be tore. New hand up here, brilliant. Men. You will be fishers of men, fishers of people. They will catch people. Remembering this other story helps us understand our story. Fishing is about more than fish for the disciples. They've been called to follow Jesus and become fishers of people. It's a picture of the work they're going to do telling people about Jesus. Speaking the gospel to people. Jesus is reminding the disciples that while they wait for real physical life forever, they've got a job to do telling other people about him. Jesus is real. Having life in his name means real life forever with Jesus after we die. And it means when we're alive now, we have a mission to tell others about that life. And that might seem really hard, but Jesus never leaves us on our own. On their own, verse 3, the disciples caught nothing. But with Jesus leading them, verse 6, their necks were bursting. The good news about Jesus will catch so many people across the world, more than we can ever imagine. But people are only caught when Jesus is there guiding us as we tell others about him. There's no point trying to do anything Jesus isn't leading us in. We won't catch anything. So a great thing to do is pray and ask Jesus for his help, to help us live for him, to tell others about him, and to help us be fishers of people ourselves, telling others Jesus is the risen Lord. So as we close now, Jesus doesn't just leave the disciples to catch fish. He's waiting for them after all their hard work. Jesus is ahead of them. He's providing breakfast, a hot one. Even though he is the risen Lord, Jesus provides all the needs of his people. Jesus serves them breakfast. He provides for them, just as he did when he washed their feet before he died. Jesus is real. And if we believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and so have life in his name, we can be sure he'll meet all our needs forever when we live with him and now as we tell others about him. That's the reality of the resurrection. It's really Jesus, and Jesus is real. Praise God.
for that. Indeed, why don't I pray? Father God, we give you thanks and praise that Jesus is risen and reigning. He really is alive in heaven this morning as we sit here. Thank you for the promise of new life for all who believe in his name. Where we're not yet trusting in Jesus, please turn us to him now. And where we are, please would your forgiving, transforming love shape our whole lives in every part, that we might bring you glory in all we think and say and do. And in Jesus' name we pray now. Amen. Well, we're going to sing an appropriate response to what we've heard, a summary of what Christians all around the world believe. They will be saying this in churches across the world or singing it in churches across the world today. So do stand if you're able and we'll join together to sing I Believe in Jesus. Today we'll pray with the help of our fingers. We can use our fingers to remind ourselves who to pray for. When we pray, our thumbs are closest to our hearts, so we start by praying for those close to our hearts, our families and friends. Father God, we pray for our families and friends. Help them to know you better day by day. And help us to think of friends to invite to Under the Sea to hear more about Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first fingers point the way, so we pray next for all those who teach us. Father God, we pray for our teachers. We pray for our teachers at school as they get ready for the new term. And we pray for our teachers in Sunday Club. Help them to point us to Jesus. And we pray that you would give us enough leaders and help us to run under the sea. In Jesus' name, amen. Our middle fingers are the most important, so we pray next for all those in charge. Father God, we pray for our Prime Minister and leaders of countries around the world. Help them to bring peace to the world, particularly to stop the wars in Gaza and Israel and in Ukraine. In Jesus' name, amen. Our ring fingers are our weakest fingers, so we pray next for those who are sick or in any kind of trouble. 
Father God, we pray for everyone caught up in wars. Give them the food and medical help they need and protect all those bringing, bringing them that food and medical help. In Jesus' name, amen. Finally, we get to our little fingers, our least important fingers. So last of all, we pray for ourselves. Father God, we pray for ourselves as we go back to school this week. Help us to do our best in all we do at school. May we know you beside us, even in times we find very difficult. In Jesus' name, amen. And we finish by praying, saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We have a God who is so worthy of all our praise. As it says in 1 Peter, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Do stand if you're able and we'll join together for our final hymn, Living Hope. Thank you.
those words. As we come to the end of our formal time of worship, do stay for refreshments. Chat and pray with each other. And just to say, we don't pass a bag around, but there is a plate and card reader if you do want to support our ministry in that way. While we stand, let's close in a prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for our time together this morning. We thank you that you brought Jesus back from the dead and for the difference that makes to our lives, both now and forever. Help us hold on to that truth as we return to work or school this week. May we be bold enough to share the good news and the evidence that backs it up with others. And may our hearts be reassured of the truth of the resurrection and the living hope you provide and the peace that you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us go now to love and serve the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen.